Hi! In this video, I want to talk about hinges, specifically print and place hinges that I designed in Fusion that are driven by user parameters. And I've got three different sizes here to show, oops, show them off. And full disclosure, I was inspired by Sven at Clockspring 3D, who did a video a couple of years ago on his approach to designing hinges. It was a heart-shaped box, I believe, was the video, subject of his video at the time. And he uses a pretty cool technique. I wanted to kind of take it a step further by adding a design that uses user parameters in Fusion so I could do things like this without having to design a hinge every time I created a new model. Basically, what I did was created this hinge, saved it as a separate Fusion file, and then pulled it into this design. And... Uh, located them in the proper place, merged them together, and I got a nice print-in-place hinge that works really well and really smooth. So if you can't tell, this is one of those easel-style picture holders that you can buy in acrylic or wood at various sources around the world. Um, very common design, so it can hold your favorite piece of art, something like this when it's sitting on the desk or the table. What I'd like to do is jump into Fusion and show you how I designed the hinge and set up the parameters and then how I incorporated it into my little foldable easel picture frame holder thing. So let's jump into Fusion and take a look. Hey, sorry for the interruption, but Ed's video editor here from the future, and this dude can talk. Just realize through editing there's going to be no way we're going to have time to keep this video at a reasonable length and include the how to create his little picture frame widgety thing. So. We're going to end up putting that into a second video, and we'll call it part two or something, and have it out in a day or two after this one. Sorry for the interruption. Let's get back to the video. Let me start by showing you the end result we're going to be going for here. I actually have two versions of this hinge. One is uh, I'm calling the flat version, which is going to print in the orientation you see here in the print bed. And then the other version I made is an upright version. These two actually have the same dimensions and user parameters, but depending on the application, it's easier to work with either the flat orientation or the upright orientation. So for example, the picture frame stand that I did prints best in the flat orientation. As you can see here, we have the two hinges laying flat, and then when it, once it's printed and the hinges break loose, it can rotate properly. And here's an example of how you might use the upright hinge. This is a box that I designed that has the hinges in the upright orientation so that you can print it as you see with the box bottom and box top on the bed. And then once that comes off and you break the hinge loose, it'll rotate and close. So you can see obviously a flat orientation would not work as well in this application because you couldn't arrange the parts for printing. Okay, so next we'll uh, jump into a blank design and start from scratch and let's make a hinge. Before we jump in and start the new design. Let me jump back to the flat uh, version here and just show you how the user parameters work. So in Fusion, if you're not familiar, the way you access the user parameters is under the modify menu. So it's modify, change parameters. I use this often enough that there's an option here under the three dots where you can pin it to your toolbar up above with that. And you can see it has that little FX icon. So here is also my change parameters for quicker access. So either modify, change parameters, or clicking the icon here will get you to the same place. So the three parameters I've created, as I mentioned, are the hinge length, the wall thickness, and the clearance. So the hinge length is the overall length here running along the, the y-axis. That would be like the length of this outer face here. The wall thickness is the height running up and down on the z-axis, which in this case is just the three millimeter height you see on the hinge pieces. And then the clearance is the spacing, which is between like the hinge pin sections and the gap you see between the pin and the face of the hinge. The way the diameter of the hinge pins is calculated is it's actually twice the wall thickness plus the clearance, and I'll show that when I get into the design. But the reason I wanted to use parameters for this is so that you can easily tweak these settings without having to redraw or edit a sketch. So for example, if I needed a hinge that was 50 millimeters long, I can just come in here and change the parameter, and everything scales accordingly. And the way I designed this also is I wanted each section of the hinge pin to be one-third of the overall length. So when we change the length parameter, the, each of these hinge segments adjust so they're approximately one-third of the overall length with a small adjustment for the clearance in there. So I'm going to put this back to 30, but you can see, like, you can make, if you need a beefier hinge, you can take it up to 5 millimeters. Everything will scale and work. If your printer is dialed in better, you can 
you know, you can take the clearance down. Maybe you can get away with a 0.3 on your printer. Go ahead and do that. That'll tighten things up. Maybe 0.5 is a little too tight, which it was for me on my 0.6 nozzle. So, you know, maybe I, I didn't try it yet, but I would probably take it up maybe to 0.65 or 0.7. And you can see all those things adjust automatically. So that's how the parameters work. And as long as you don't put in some crazy huge or crazy small numbers, everything should work really pretty well. Whenever I start a new design, if I know that I'm going to use user parameters, that's the first thing I create. So by clicking, I'm going to click my uh, change parameter icon that I've made the shortcut for in my toolbar. And remember, you can use modify change parameters from the menu to get into the same place. And to create a user parameter, we're just going to hit the plus symbol next to the user parameter section here. And we need to give it a name. So the first one we're going to create is hinge length. I like to use camel case where I capitalize the each word of the variable name. And uh, the only rule is you can't have spaces in your names. And I think you're limited on special characters as well. Um, other times I, I might occasionally use an underscore, but typically I would use the camel case format for my variable names. Uh, expression is the, the, length, the length that we want to kind of start with as a default. I'm going to make that 30. And the unit is millimeters, which it defaults whenever you're creating, but you may, if you, as you're using user parameters, you have options for, you know, all kinds of length options. And, you know, you can go meters, feet, inches. You can do angles. You can do currency, current. There's all, all kinds of stuff here that I've never used. Um, and you can also use no units, which can be handy when you're doing uh, any math and formulas. So um, user parameters are really good. I may hopefully do a, a more in-depth look into those at some point for you if you're interested. So we'll hit OK, and then we're going to hit the plus on the user parameter to create the next one. And I didn't mention you can also add comments, too, if you have a lot of parameters or you want to help document things for others or remember what you did when you're looking at it six months later. Um, Comments can come in handy. This is a really simple design. So I didn't really use any um, any comments, but if you wanted to add one, like creating wall thickness here at a three millimeter thick wall, um, you know, you might want to say something, um, make this larger for a beefier hand. You know, it might it just it might help other users. Um, I, I I do that on some of the some of the models I've shared, or you might put a range of values that work well. Um, you know, you might want to make a comment that says, you know, if you get much smaller than three millimeters, it might be pretty wimpy. Things like that. Okay, and the last one we need is our clearance, and that's going to be zero point five millimeters. And here we can say lower this if your printer can handle it. Or maybe you want to say OK to lower this. So now that our parameters are created, we're going to start by creating a sketch. Uh, I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to do it on the XY. I'm sorry, on the front face, which is the XZ plane. And we're going to start by creating a circle and it's going to be a center diameter circle anchored right to the origin. And it's important, um, best practice maybe is a better term, to anchor it to the origin so it's easier to have a fully defined sketch when we're done. And for the purposes of this hinge, it's going to make aligning it to other parts when we want to uh, attach it. Um, it's going to make it easier to, to work off of the origin for that. So the diameter I mentioned earlier is actually twice the wall thickness plus the clearance. So we are going to, we can start typing in the user parameter, which is um, the wall thickness. And it notice as we type, it sees it here so we can select it. And we're going to multiply that by two. And then we're going to add the clearance. And you can either click that with the mouse when it finds it or hit enter as I did in that example there. And then to lock it in, hit enter. So now we've got our center circle at a six and a half millimeter diameter, which is twice the wall thickness plus our, of three millimeters plus our half millimeter clearance. And then the next thing we want to do is we're going to create an offset off that circle. And we're going to pull that in. Um, the, uh, and that's a negative, um, a negative offset. 
And we're going to pull this in by the clearance. And what this circle is going to be used for, this profile we're creating here, will be used to create the concave and convex uh, parts for the hinge pins um, where, the, where they pivot. Okay, next I'm going to create a another offset from the outside of the circle, and that's going to be for the clearance of the walls when they're spinning around the pins. And for that, I'm going to use a three-point arc, which I have pinned to my toolbar up here, or I can go create arc, actually create a center point arc. And the thing, just to point out since I'm here, when, I, when you select a three-point arc here, to switch it to one of the other types of arcs, you can do it over here on the sketch palette. So if I want to switch this to a center point arc, so I can just do that kind of on the fly. So you don't need, even though I pinned a three-point arc, you're not limited to that. To go back into the Create menu and choose it here, you can, once you select it for an icon that you've pinned, you can t change it on the fly over here. So you can do it, switch it to a tangent arc or a center point arc. So I want to create this arc in the, again, or the centered on the origin. And I'm just going to click in there. I'm going to pull it out somewhere past the outer diameter. And I'm going to make my second point, And I'm going to bring it around 180 degrees and make my third point. And I'm going to set the distance from the outer circle to the line I just drew. And I'm going to set that to the clearance. 0.5. But now just to show, since we've got this far, how easy it is to change this, we can come in here. We want to change the clearance, say to 0.3. You can see how all of those change, uh, our sketch changes accordingly. So parameters are already our friend and helping us out if we need to tweak things. This is actually going to be used as a construction line because I'm going to use it as a reference and I'm not going to use it as a boundary for any uh, extrusions or boundary for any hard profiles I'm creating. So the next thing where I want to create is the hinge walls, and those are just simply done with a line. So I can hit L for line on my keyboard or create line, and notice the shortcut L. And I'm going to start this line in line with the origin anchored to the outer edge of the pin. I'm just going to pull it over horizontally, and I'm going to make two of those. I'm going to draw one going to the right and one going to the left. And then I'm going to give these walls the length, and this is really arbitrary, and it doesn't really matter as long as it's long enough. I wanted it long enough so I could pinch it with my thumb and my finger when the, when the uh, print comes off the printer to help break the hinge loose. So I just did it as the, the wall thickness times four. You can give it whatever you want, but that seemed to be a, a good length, both for breaking my test prints hinges loose and for attaching them to, to a model when I brought this into another design. And then we need to create a height on this. So this is going to be another line and we're going to draw a vertical line up and then we're going to bring this line over. We're going to stop it short. Doesn't really matter where. I'm going to stop it short here and then I'm going to kind of repeat this on the other side. You just want to watch it. You don't tie any constraints inadvertently as you're doing this. One way to avoid that for sure is just to hold the control key down and then you're kind of free. But I do like to like do my horizontal and vertical constraints, but notice how this is trying to snap to the midpoint here. I don't want that. I'm gonna, I don't wanna lock it into that, so I'm gonna make sure I miss that. So dimension here, this is gonna be the wall thickness. And same here. And then just to show it, I'm gonna go back to my original here. You can see these angles that we have here. So the, the profile, I could, well, actually what I could do is just show you the sketch we're gonna make here. So this is the sketch we're recreating here. We've drawn the wall here, and we're going to create a 45 degree angle that's tangent to the outer hinge pin and connect with the wall. And then the construction line that we did the center point arc for is used just to give us a contact point for the other 45 degree angle to make contact. And this just keeps our clearances at the right number. So everything is 0.5, you know, at a minimum. So when things are spinning and rotating, they're not going to be any closer than that clearance to each other. Okay, so back to our new design here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my lines that are tangent to the outer pin. And I'm just going to pull a line down somewhere in here. Yeah, and that line is, I guess it doesn't matter. And again, I'm going to do two of those just to get us in the ballpark here. So... To constrain these, I'm going to make this line tangent to the outer circle, this line tangent to the outer circle. I'm going to set a distance, a measurement here, so I'm going to set the, the angle uh, between this and this at 45 degrees, and the angle between this line and this line also at 45 degrees. 
And you notice how these are now locking in. So the next thing I want to do is join these two lines together. And the quickest way to do that is with the coincident constraint. So I'm going to say I want this end point to be co coincident with this one. And because of other constraints with this line being horizontal and this one being at a 45, Fusion will figure out where that point of convergence is and hook them together. And then the same on this side. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to draw a line that runs from this point of convergence to our construction line. And if you notice, if, you, if you're careful when you draw this, you, we want this to be perpendicular, which creates another 45 degree angle going down. And just we pull it down until we see everything kind of snap and that will that'll constrain it and lock it in at 45. You could draw it more arbitrarily, like, you know, something like this, and then use the constraints to, to make it fit. So, for example, our line isn't perpendicular and it's not coincident with our construction line, so we can make it perpendicular by using the perpendicular constraint and say we want this line we just drew to be perpendicular with this one, and then we also want the end point here to be coincident with this construction line, and then that locks everything in. So now that we've got that, the next thing we need to do is draw a line coming straight down from this point here on each side. And we want that to be a uh, perpendicular line as well to the line below it. So let's start draw those two in. And now I think, if I remember right, that should be everything we need for creating our hinges here. Let me just reference our other sketch here quick. Yeah, the other thing I'll point out, I did add some extra construction lines, which I will do on this one. Let me get back here. So I, what I did is I drew a line. I didn't want it centered. I just wanted it roughly in here, perpendicular. And what I did is I made this one tangent to the construction line. And then I also made it a construction line. So I click on that, hit X to convert it. And you can do it over here on line type as well. You either have center line or construction line or a regular sketch line that would be used to create a profile. But I want that to be a construction line, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, some of you may be wondering, because this drawing is so symmetrical, why I didn't create like the left half or the right half and then mirror it. I actually thought about doing that, but because it's relatively quick and easy, in this case, I just I, it was just as easy to model it straight out from scratch. So that's what I did. Okay, so let's align this tangent with that. And then we'll make that a construction line as well. X is a shortcut key to turn that into a construction line. I'm going to go back to the original model that I designed here just to show you how this construction line works. So as good a time as I need to switch over and show you. Let me turn my bodies back on here and turn my sketch off for a moment. So if we are looking at the clearance here on this hinge, I do have a joint set up so I can rotate this and show you. So if so, the hinge can go from basically fully closed and come all the way around. And because of where we drew that, that vertical line here, it allows us to bring it back to 270 degrees. So we can go from like zero degrees to 270. And in reality, when you 3D print this, just because of the nature of 3D printing and things not always being exactly crisp and right on, what I found is that when I rotated it, in reality, I couldn't quite get the full 270. It was stopping, you know, somewhere short of that. So that was the purpose of construction line here. So if I wanted to quickly edit this so that I had more room when I wrote when my hinge rotates, all I had to do is come in here, click the construction line, hit X to turn it into a non-construction line, and flip this the, in, the ones that are closer and make the construction lines out of those. So basically reverse which ones are construction and which ones are regular sketch lines. And when we finish this sketch, because of the way Fusion works, it updates everything. And so now we have we have more space in here between this because this edge has been moved over to the right. So now if I change my orientation here. So now if I rotate my hinge toward the 270 mark, that's 270 in there. But you can see I've got room to go. Well, I actually have the joint limit set. But you can see that if I didn't have the joint, joint limit set, I could rotate that a little bit farther. I, I can get past 270. So that's what the purpose was for that extra construction line. It just gives me the flexibility to easily change where that line is. So with the sketch finished, now we're ready to start creating our hinge. So if we go back and look at our reference model here, you can see how we have the profiles created. So let's start by creating the left side of the hinge here. So what we're gonna do then is to create the left side is we need to extrude the profiles that will be used to create that left side. So E for extrude, 
and we need the wall and we need these three profiles here for the, the center pin and this parts that connect everything on the left side. And I'm going to just rotate this a little bit of an angle. So we are going to extrude this and we want to extrude it both forward and back. So we're going to change the direction from one sided to symmetric because we're going to go the same amount in both weight directions. And the length we want is the wall thickness, like sorry, not the wall thickness, the hinge length. And you can see that that is a little too long because we're going 30 millimeters in both directions. We really need to go, because we're going symmetric, we want half of that in each direction. So one way to do that would to be, say, the hinge length divided by 2, which would work. But an easier way that might be easier to keep everything straight is to change the measurement down here from one direction to two. You can see the icon. So we, we say change the measurement to use the overall. So it's, it's the overall length, and it does the math and and limits the overall length to 30 millimeters instead. And, and that's it. So that's step one. We're creating a new body. That's good. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to create this cutout in the middle to make room for the center pin. So again, we're going to do another extrude of the, the exact, um, not the exact same, but similar profiles. So we're going to hit E for extrude. And this time we just need to extrude the center pin portion and this left just the inside here this portion here and again this is we're going to go both directions because we're going to center this so it's symmetric our measurement is going to be the whole length not one direction and we're going to start pulling that and we do want this to be a cut operation to make that hole and if you remember i wanted these pin segments to be one third of the overall length of the hinge so this is going to be hinge length divided by three and then the other thing we need to do is we want to add the clearance in here because the single pin gets inserted into the space we're creating. It needs to have room on both sides to do its thing. So we are going to add the clearance to this. And when we are done, we should have, since our hinge length is 30 millimeters, this opening should be 10 plus the clearance, so it should be 10.5. So if we inspect this and say get the distance from this face to this face, you can see we've got 10.5. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is we're going to create, again, go back to our reference. We're going to create the, let me hide this uh, right side here. So to create the hinge pins, instead of using a, a hinge that has a pin that goes all the way through, you know, like we see in our homes and our doors and things, for 3D printing, this method works really well for using this, this conical shape, and that half a millimeter clearance seems to work really well. So we're going to create these two concave sections, and if you remember, we did an offset for that clearance here to give us a, a profile to do that. So back to our drawing, to our uh, new design, to do an extrude, and we can't see that profile because our sketch is currently hidden, so we need to make the sketch visible. So we're going to have to do this in two pieces. We can't do this as a symmetric extrude because of the distance here. But we, what we want to do is extrude this single profile in the center of our hinge pin. And instead of starting from here, we want to start at an object. And that object is going to be, in this case, it's going to be this face right here. And we're going to pull it in this direction. And the distance we want to go is the wall thickness. Remember, our diameter was originally created to be twice the wall thickness. So that's why this is going to work as a parameter and it'll scale nicely. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to do a taper angle here. And because I've done this so many times, I know that that needs to be a negative angle. So it's negative 45. And if we look in here, we can see it creating the cone. Let me, yeah, you can see how it creates the cone in there. And the one thing I personally didn't like was how the cone was such a sharp point. So I changed the distance to, from wall thickness to, um, I subtracted the clearance just to pull it back a little bit and kind of blunt that point. And I did a clearance times two because for a 0.5 millimeter or even a 0.3, that'd be a pretty small circle. So yeah, I just like the look of clearance times two. You can actually choose whatever you like there. As long as you do the same on both ends, you won't have any interference or parts welding together because we're maintaining this half millimeter clearance all the way as we go. Okay, and then we just need to rinse and repeat on the other side. So we are going to do an extrude with the center profile. We're going to start on the object, which is this face. And this is going to go the other direction, so this becomes a negative extrude, which is a negative wall thickness. And because it's negative, I need to add the clearance times 2 to shorten that. And then neg the taper angle still does stay negative in this one, so negative 45. And there we go. So now we have our two concave cones cut out of the uh, left side of the hinge pin, and that is done and ready to go. And we should have a single body here, which we do. And I'm going to call this hinge left. 
And then the other thing I like to do, because these four extrusions as a group created the left pin, I'm going to actually group, make a group out of them. So I click the first one, I hit shift, click the last one, I right click and say create a group, and it collapses them into a group, and then I can right click again, choose rename, and call this hinge left. So depending on how crazy my design gets, this just gives me a way to kind of quickly find things, and you easily expand it and to edit individual steps in here. Okay, so now we need to create the right side, which is pretty much a repeat of what we just did, except we're going to have the cutouts be where the pins are on the left side, and we're going to have create the middle section. Okay, to make the right side hinge, the easiest way to do it is actually just to extrude this piece, and then as a second extrude, do the center section. So E for extrude, we're going to grab just this outer wall piece. We're going to do a symmetric extrude for the full measurement and it's going to be the hinge length. And then to create the center pin, we're going to extrude just the middle parts and attach them to the, to the wall on the right-hand side. So again, E for extrude, we grab our center pin and this section on the right to attach it. This is going to be a symmetric extrude. Full measurement, this is going to be hinge length divided by 3. And if you remember, when we did the clearance, it got us 0.25 on each end, so we need to pull this back in by the clearance as well. And then on each side, we'll have a full, a full clearance of 0.5, because that's what our value is right now. So the hinge length divided by 3 minus the clearance, and we see, we'll see that shorten up just a little bit. And that should be perfect. So now if we check this, uh, we can use the inspect tool again, I for inspect. And if we click this edge and this edge, we should have a 0.5 distance, which we do. Okay, so that's looking good. And now we need to create the conical extrusions that go into the, into the uh, concave part. We're going to create the convex portion of the hinge in the middle. So to do that, for I'm temporarily going to hide the left hinge here. And we're going to do an extrude of this, again, the center section only. And... Again, we're not going to do a symmetric. We have to use these uh, faces here, the objects. So we're going to, instead of starting on the profile plane, we're going to start on the object. And we'll do this one on this end first. We're going to start with this face. And it's the same as before. We're going to extrude it the wall thickness minus the clearance times 2. And we're going to set our taper angle at negative 45. And we're going to hit OK. That's going to join that together. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, E for extrude, select that inner profile. We're going to start on the object, which is this face this time, and this is going to be our negative wall thickness, plus the clearance, times 2. And I forgot the negative taper angle, so go back in and edit that extrusion and put a negative 45 in here. Yeah, that needs to be a join, that's correct. Okay, so now we have our two sides of the hinge are complete. So it was really just that simple to complete this hinge. So I'm going to finish up similarly to what I did before. I'm going to rename body 2 here to hinge right. And I'm going to take these steps that I did to create the hinge on the right and make a group out of them. So click and shift-click the last one and create group and then right-click and rename hinge right. And there you go, our hinge is done. We can make it look a little pretty by hiding the sketch, turn on some appearances. I like my teal and purple and reds and I like my metallic aluminum look. And there's our hinge. So I haven't added any joints yet. They're really not necessary unless you feel the need to animate it. We can look a, at a section analysis. So we can do inspect section analysis. And again, this is one I use often enough. I click the three dots and I pinned it to my toolbar up here. So section analysis, we can choose a choose a plane that we want to look at. You can see how the clearances work. Switch it to this face here. Oh, turn off this face and collect. There we go. So you can see how the pins intersect with each other. And that, that 0.5 clearance maintains all the way around, even though we truncated the, uh, the end of the, the cones in there. But because we created the gap up here at where the hinges join the, the one-third of the hinge length minus the clearance, that clearance is maintained even as you extrude and cut from those, those faces because the faces are that far apart.
So it, yeah, it's it's pretty much that simple. And so now if we change our view to go home here, nope, then we turn off section analysis. And now we have our user parameters, we can pull them up and now we can change things. So if you want a 60 millimeter hinge, you can do it in each segment's about 20. I haven't printed anything smaller than three millimeters and that works really well. I probably will try a two millimeter one that's getting pretty small, but I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't work. You know, if you don't need anything super heavy duty, you can probably get it down that small and have it work. I like three, it doesn't add that much to the print time. And again, like I said earlier, if you have your printer dialed in really well and you can get away with tighter clearances, go ahead and give it a try. You know, if you've printed those torture tests like Angus created from Maker's Muse, and you can you can have a .3 or even a .2 break loose, I say go for it. It should, it should work. These, uh, these hinges work really pretty well. Next, I wanted to take a look at how I designed the upright one. It was really pretty similar to what we just did, but I was able to do it maybe a little bit more efficiently. So we'll take a look at that next. And before we do that, I should probably save my work here, which I didn't do at all. So this is a hinge widget demo, and we'll just give that a save. Okay, I'm going to start a new design here for the upright version. And just to, before we dive in, let me show you the sketch we're going to reference on that one. So I was able to do this with just basically drawing kind of the, the one side of the hinge. And then if you notice in the timeline down here, I did the left side group and then I rotated it, actually extruded it kind of from the right side, but then I rotated it and flipped it over to the left. And then I took the same profiles and created it. So let me show you how I did that. It was basically the same drawing. So we'll jump back into our new design here. Well, my video editor talked me into a post-production voiceover instead of the normal blah, blah, blah that I do. So we're taking what was a 12-minute segment here to show you how I modeled this upright hinge, and we're going to fly through it in three minutes. So here we go. So what we've already done is created the user parameters and creating the exact same sketch we did before for the most part. The We did the circles with the offset, and the only difference here is we're doing the walls on a vertical line instead of horizontal because of the orientation that we're going to print these at later. So everything's the same. Doing our constraints, drawing our 45 degree angle lines, going to constrain them, make them coincident, draw our other perpendicular lines, and add the construction line, and we're good to go. So from here, we're going to, even though we only drew everything on the right half, we're going to actually create the left side hinge first. We're going to do everything on the right side and then rotate it in a second here. And man, we could have sped this up. I'm looking for things to say while this is happening. So here we're creating the, the, side, the left side that has two pins in it, and we're extruding the cones. Bringing it in the wall thickness, shortening it by the clearance times two to truncate it. And now you're going to see that we're going to make a little mistake here setting the pivot. I'm trying to put it on the origin so I can rotate this thing. And what I'm explaining here is you have to remember to hit that green check mark to actually set the pivot when you're done. And so I figured out my mistake, moved it to the origin, rotated it to the left side. And now we've got our left hinge done, and now we're going to create the right side by extruding the wall first, and then the pin section as a sep separate operation. That's one-third of the hinge length with an extra clearance in there, and then we're inspecting the clearance to make sure we have our half a millimeter, which we do. And now we're wrapping things up with naming everything, creating our groups on the timeline, Oh, I got ahead of myself. We're creating the pins, and then we're going to clean things up. There we go. Creating our groups, renaming everything, and then making it look pretty with some appearances. So that's the upright hinge. It prints in place just as nicely as the flat version. And appreciate you uh, hanging in here this long. I know this video got really long, and I wasn't going to make you sit through another 12 minutes at the end when I could do a voiceover and get it done in three minutes. So thanks for stopping by. Look forward to posting another much shorter video on how I created my little picture frame hinge thingy. And we'll look forward to that in a couple of days. Have a great day. Bye.